Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we're going to be making a custom version of Laser Light Skeletor to look exactly like the new Adventures version of uh, the Skeletor as you see him in the middle here. Now, this is going to be done using a kit from Barbarossa Customs. You'll have seen me uh, actually use some of his parts in a few projects. A while back, I restored a vintage Laser Light Skeletor and used a couple of pieces from him to uh, repair the damage on that. And I also had a great time building his very own uh, kit version of Laser Light Skeletor, which you can see here, which is uh, basically taking in the original laser light skeletal and uh, he's been recast and uh, you get to build him from scratch so you build him up you paint him up put some wiring in this one's got a custom switch on the back so you can light him up like that his eyes light up and his arm lights up it was a really fun kit to make well now what he's done is taken that kit and made a few modifications to it so what we'll end up with is a sort of a laser light version of Skeletor, but looking like the New Adventures version. So what you get again is a kit version of this figure. It's all in parts. Everything has been cast in the right sort of colours. We've got to put him together and we've got to paint him. So let's take a closer look at the kit and then we'll start building. So this is the kit that you get from Barbarossa Customs and it comes with all the pieces that you need to uh, make your own new adventures laser light combo version of Skeletor. We've got the wiring here, we've got all the pieces that have been cast in the right sort of colours. There's a few changes to the original laser light Skeletor. Obviously his uh, clear plastic hand has now been replaced with a solid purple hand. That's because uh, the uh, new adventures, as you can see, has a different paint scheme. Uh, the left hand as well has been cast in purple. I may make some modifications to this. Uh, it's supposed to just be glued on like that, but I think with a couple of bits of Lego, I can make it so that it actually rotates and it'll probably be a little bit more useful like that. We've then got to paint all of his uh, body up. This comes with a really nice looking helmet here. If I just quickly put the uh, head together, you can just hold those pieces together like that. I'll put that on. So you can see that really does make him look like the New Adventures version of uh, Skeletor. I think when I come to paint this, I'm not going to paint it exactly like this version here. I like this figure, but I think the original face on Skeletor with the sort of the uh, greeny yellows and uh, just looks a little bit nicer than this one that's painted in a sort of bone white. So I may make my own sort of modifications as I come to paint it. And that's the first thing we really need to do is actually start painting it. It's going to take a little while to paint because there's lots of areas to do. I'm going to, as I say, sort of roughly follow this. So I've got to paint bits purple and that but I think I'm going to do my own little sort of takes on things to make it look a little bit more custom. This kit does come with a guide as to how it should be painted and you can see it's got sort of purple and dark blue bits. I'm going to roughly go along with this as I say I'm going to sort of make a few modifications and we've also got to make the cape at the end and it even comes with the uh, correct cape fabric. We can use the pattern that I made for the laser light version of Skeletal which I'll show you here and I'm going to make a few little modifications because we don't need the hood over the top obviously because he's wearing that quite fancy uh, helmet there. So I'm going to make a modification to this to make it sort of fit a little bit better. So the first thing we really need to do is to start painting and mixing some paints up to try and match some of these colours. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up which means I've got to start with these shoes and these need to be painted this sort of dark purple to match the colour of the hands and I happen to have this uh, Vallejo model colour which is 70.960 violet and taking that and just adding a very tiny amount of black I've got a purple here that is a pretty good match for those colours so I'm going to paint both of these feet it's just the feet that need to be painted and really you can paint it uh, how you want there's a uh, quite a lot of boot detail going on so I'm going to paint it sort of fairly high up because the new adventures version of the boots come right up to the knee obviously we're not going to be able to do quite the same just because there's sort of uh, bits of uh, calf and stuff showing here so I'm going to do my own sort of take on it and uh, paint to the details where I see fit on both of these uh, feet until I've got something that looks quite nice. It'd probably take a couple of coats just because this is a dark colour going onto a fairly light colour plastic. And uh, once I've painted everything, I'm going to put a clear coat on top of it using a spray lacquer, but I'll wait until I've actually painted all of the pieces and do everything together because there's quite a few pieces that need painting. <laughs>
I'm really happy with how this uh, dark purple colour has come out. That's looking very nice. So while that is drying, I can get on with some of the sort of ready purple colours that are all over this body. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of areas to cover, so this is actually going to take quite a while. I've got to do all of the belt and all of the chest, and I'm going to be following the sort of the rough original pattern of where the paint was put on this uh, laser light skeletal. But I'll be doing it in this sort of burgundy red colour. To get this colour, I don't have a perfect match. So again, I've mixed something. I'm using some Vallejo model colours again. This is a uh, violet red, which is uh, number 70. 0.812. It's not quite red enough though, so I've added some of this red colour, which is called uh, Bloody Red, but it's a game colour, 72.010, and a bit of that mixed in has given me this really rather nice colour. Now the images that come with this kit has got a sort of metallic finish to it. I don't particularly like that, so I'm not going to add the, any sort of metallic finish to this. I want it to be the sort of same flat colours that we've got here, and I will be adding a satin a top coat, as I say, to cover this all up once it's done, which will give it this nice shine. So I'm just going to get painting there's quite a lot of areas to cover so this is going to take a little while It's now the next day and everything has had time to dry and I'm really happy with how this is looking. The colour match is very good. It's a nice sort of uh, burgundy colour. We've now got to add the uh, silver details and you can see here that there are just some little bits of silver detailing on the front of this uh, New Adventures uh, Skeletor. So I'm basically just going to see what uh, sort of shapes are on this version and uh, paint those. I like some of this pipe work so I'm going to paint that and then I just may sort of pick out a few other odd little bits. Obviously none of the shapes that are on this version actually match on here so you've just got to use your sort of imagination. I will be painting the skull on the front of his pelvis because that's quite a key piece and that does actually copy across and this is the paint that I'm going to be using. This is a game colour and it's 72.052 silver. I've not used it before so this will be the first time I actually sort of get to use it on a model. Let's just see how it goes.
The silver paint is going on pretty well, but I can see it's going to take a couple of coats. So I thought I'd start another job while uh, waiting for that to dry. And that's to paint the face. I have decided to go as close to the original as I can, because uh, I might as well. And it's a nice sort of combination then of the uh, the uh, laser light skeletal and the new adventures skeletal. So I've just mixed up the dark sort of greeny blue that goes around the side of his face. And for that, I've used an olive green and just a sort of a dark blue mixing them together. And I've got this color, which I'm quite happy with. So I'm going to sort of make up how I paint it. You can see it's got a sort of wobbly line all around the edge of it. It doesn't seem to be that important how that part is painted. So I'm going to paint that first and then we'll paint the skull face on, which I will probably use the laser light skeletal as the basis for the shape of that. But we'll add this dirt dark sort of bluey green around the edge first, let that dry and then we can paint the skull on. I'm happy with how that green has come out. It's looking quite nice. It's quite a dark green, but then the green on this original one is pretty dark. I've now got to paint on the sort of skull part of it, and I've already mixed up a color to uh, match that. It's uh, basically some uh, Vallejo white. I've added a bit of beige to it just to make it a little bit more bony. And then I've also added a little bit of this sort of olive green as well, just a very small amount of that, because you can see here that this is not a sort of traditional bone color. It does have a bit of green in it. So I'm gonna paint all of that on. Then I'm gonna paint the black bits on, and that will uh, sort of finish the look of it off. The eyes we don't need to paint because that's a clear piece of plastic that we put inside the head. So let me get all of this uh, painted up and that will then be all of the pieces painted and we'll be able to apply a clear top coat to them all and then start constructing the figure. for the glue to dry I can get on with this little custom piece that I wanted to do uh, as the hand is a separate part I thought it'd be fun to uh, use a piece of Lego to make it so this will actually rotate much like the other arm does you can see I've already put this arm together and that uh, hand rotates quite nicely so we're going to be using this which is a Lego axle pin you can see it's got the sort of the uh, axle part on one side and the pin on the other I'm going to cut down this axle part because I only want it to go sort of partially into the hand this hand is made of a harder resin so I'm just going to uh, drill in a small amount and insert a small bit into 
there and glue that in place. And then because this arm is a bit sort of softer rubber, I'm going to drill all the way into that and then we can insert the uh, pin part of the Lego piece into there and we will have a hand that moves around. I've already got a drill here with the right size drill bit, so I'm just going to uh, drill those holes, do a little bit of tidying up. I will probably have to trim away this middle ridge that's on the Lego piece just so that everything lies a bit flush and then uh, we should have a hand that will rotate. So uh, let me get that all uh, modified and fitted. go that is it done it's really that simple you can see I've just attached this piece of Lego stuck it into the hand and now there's a hole in the arm and we can insert that in and we can now rotate the hand around so we've basically got the same movement that we have in the right arm we've got it in the left arm which will mean that he's a, a little bit more poseable and when he's holding his staff we can do more things with it so uh, simple modification but I think it's well worth doing and here you go this is the, all the pieces now that the uh, semi-gloss finish has been applied and has had time to dry this is a Mr Hobby semi-gloss that I've used you can see it gives a nice sheen to it and everything is looking really nice I've also started to put some of these pieces together so you can see I've glued the pelvis together to get the legs in place and I've put the head together as well with the little clear plastic piece inside for the eyes to light up. Now we can move on to the wiring. The wiring is actually a fairly simple uh, job on this because essentially it's one LED with a switch. I'm going to add one extra piece to that which is this little battery holder. The kit doesn't come with this battery holder but I would suggest that you get them. Uh, they're fairly cheap I think a, you know a pound will buy you three or four of them and this is for the battery which is a uh, CR2 2032 battery it just means that you can slot that in and you can easily change the battery so let me get this uh, wiring all sorted and then we can start putting this back together if you want to see the full process for how I built this kit originally then I will put a link in the description of the previous video I've done building the laser light skeletal kit because that goes over all the details some bits I'm skimming in this video because I've obviously shown them before but um, anyway let's get on with this part
And here you go, this is the simple circuit. You've essentially got a, a battery going to a light, but with a switch on the uh, positive side of the uh, battery. So if I switch this switch, you can see the light comes on. If I switch it again, it goes off. It's that simple. You do have to remember to uh, thread all of this through the uh, little battery pack here so that the cables are coming out of the bottom and then that should all fit inside the uh, laser light skeletal body. So I'm now gonna put the body back together and we'll have the sort of finished figure, which will still need a cape making, but. To and it will actually have the figure all put together for the first time. There he is all put together. He's looking really nice. Everything's moving nice and free and easy and everything is glued together pretty firmly. So I'm very happy with that. So we can now go ahead and put this uh, electronic piece inside. You can see there the hole in his neck. So we've got to insert this uh, little LED up into there, which is easy enough to do. Just push that in. And then this battery should, if I've got it right, just fit inside there. And then we can put the battery pack in and lock it in place like so there we go yep that looks right so uh, now if i press the button we can see that the eyes light up nicely so that's all working as it should now we need to make him a cape. Now the pattern for the laser light skeletal cape is available on toyploy.com. So I've basically just printed out my own file. I put some uh, double-sided tape on the back of it and just loosely stuck it onto the fabric that's supplied with this kit. And we've got to cut it out. The original laser light skeletal cape has a hood. We don't need that part. I'm just gonna be using this back uh, sort of piece of the cape. And I'm gonna make a few little modifications to it so that it fits on the figure better. The way it fits originally, because we have the hood over the top, that holds this back section together this piece goes over the battery pack but without the hood this isn't going to work particularly well so I'm going to add an extra piece of elastic on the back there and then a piece of elastic across the front once it's all folded you'll see exactly what I mean I'm also going to modify the bottom part of this cape just a little bit I'm going to add slightly more of a curve to these corners so they're not so sharp because the uh, new adventures version of Skeletor the cape isn't quite so sort of pronounced and pointy as this one so I'm just going to make those modifications as I cut this out then we've got to do a little bit of sewing and that can go on the figure Now that that's all cut out, we've got a little bit of sewing to do because we need to sew a piece of elastic across there and then one piece around the front. So I've got some of this, uh, this three millimeter flat black elastic. You can see it's got quite a bit of stretch to it and I've just cut a small piece off here. I'm essentially gonna sew that one just across there and then we fold it around and we need a little sort of loop to go around the front of his neck so imagine this is a cape sitting on a figure uh, we'll have a piece at the back and a piece at the front and then you can slot that over his neck so let me get those pieces sewn on and we'll test this on the figure and see if that's worked I think cutting the corners of this off has made it look a lot nicer it's a simple thing to do but it does make a big difference so let's get these a little bit sewed on and then we'll test it on the figure Okay, that's all sewn. So now you can see this is what I've done. I've taken that cape pattern. You can see there's the hole at the back for the battery pack. And I've got a bit of elastic on the front and a bit of elastic on the back, which means that we should be able to hoop this over his head and it will all stay in place and not sort of fall about. Yep, that's working nicely. You can see without putting that bit of elastic on the back, the back of this cape is just gonna fall open because there's no hood on it. So you need that extra bit of elastic but that does look really quite nice. So this figure is pretty much finished. I've got his helmet here. So this is the uh, New Adventures version of Skeletor's helmet. We can pop that on his head, squeeze that on. 
Oh yeah, really starting to come to life now. And then we've got the staff, which you can see here is a modified version of the New Adventures of Skeletal Staff. It's got a different handle on it. If I bring in the original one, you can see it's got a sort of blade at the bottom, but the top part is the same. And this should fit very nicely in the laser light skeletal hand, like so. That's really nice. Let's test his eyes again. Yeah, really pleased with that. That's looking lovely. And there we go, that is the completed kit. So I've now got a custom version of Laser Light Skeletor made to look like the new adventures of He-Man Skeletor as we see here. And I think it does a really nice job. Just those few modifications, a new helmet, new paint scheme. We've got different hands, different cape. He looks fantastic. And it's a nice variant to add to my growing collection of Skeletors. Building these kits is really good fun, something I, I thoroughly enjoy doing. It's really nice to get to grips with all of the sort of bits and pieces for a figure, painting it up, putting it together, making the electronics. I just get a real kick out of doing it. So uh, it's been great fun making this. And I've made my own little modifications to it as we've gone along, you know, my modifying the hand and modifying the cape and essentially doing my own paint scheme on it. And that's the great thing about these sort of kits. You can essentially do whatever you want with it. If you want to have a go at building your own version of this, then uh, check out the Barbarossa Customs website and uh, also check out some of the other things that he has for sale because he makes all sorts of bits for various Masters of the Universe figures. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not check out some of my other Masters of the Universe projects and uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.